In this video, Paul Mohindi will share five of his favorite time-saving Revit tips from Revit Tips and Tricks ebook that we have created at SourceCAD. You can get this ebook for free from the link in the description of this video. So with that, let's get started. So over here, we have our Revit Tips and Tricks from SourceCAD learning and it's an ebook that you can easily get and it's actually totally free so this ebook is really good and it has been compiled by others from SourceCAD. this is paul muhindi and varun nayar so it's a really well detailed book which covers three main topics the first one being revit architectural tips the second one being revit structural tips and the third one being revit mep tricks so depending with the field that you're in you can get pro tips under these specific ebooks so you can be able to go through the various tips that are shared within this specific ebook and you can be able to use it but in this case i'll just be focusing on five of my best tips that you need to understand so in this case i have five of my best tips and tricks that i'm going to show you and i have bookmarked them here so that i can easily show you the first one is working with multiple views so this usually comes in handy especially when you're working in your 2d view and your 3d view so how do you pull this off is very simple so inside your specific uh, project so in this case i have this project which is a structural project so if i wanted to work in two views all that i have to do is hit on wt on my keyboard and i'll have all these views shown within my view and not only that if i was to navigate to view tab and i can be able to select the type of view that i want if i want to go with tile views all i have to do is just simply click on this and the tiles will be created here and if i want to remove all inactive views all that i have to do is click on this quick option here or click on this quick option here and all inactive views will be removed so let me show you how you can easily use this so all that you have to do is to have two open tabs at the moment then select the one that you want to use make sure that you're within the workspace then click on wt and then you're going to have this side by side view so in the event that you were to change anything let's say if i was just to uh, select this bar here and then just hit on eh to hide element is going to be updated in real time on this other view so that's one of the reasons that i really enjoy working in multiple views the second pro tip that I usually use a lot is using the filter selection. So this comes much in handy, especially when you have multiple items selected and you want to filter out only specific items. What do I mean? It's very simple. Still within our specific Revit software, let's just open a dashed window selecting from right to left and I have selected everything. From the contextual ribbon we're going to have this option of selection and you're going to have this option of filter so if you click on this option once you'll find this option and from here you can check none then you can check only the items that you want let's say i want to check the rebar alone i'll click on that then click on ok and then i can be able to manipulate only the rebar and you can clearly see all my options are now specified for rebar items so if i was to hide let's say i right click then just simply go to hide in view by element all my specific rebars will be hidden while all these other items will be left in place so it's a really handy feature especially when you're working with so many items within your drawing let's say when you're working in a 3d view where you have so many items happening you can easily just filter out what you want to hide so in this case if i want to hide just specific items i can just simply dash select everything still the same thing will be shown within our contextual ribbon and if you click on filter you'll have this long list that you can simply hide or you can uncheck if you don't want to use them i'll check on none and i want to hide my levels my grid and let's say my multi segment grids then i'll click on ok after that's done all i have to do is just simply right click navigate to hide in view and just select elements and just like that all our grids and levels will be hidden from sight so the third pro tip that i usually use is adding a selection box so this is very important especially when you're working with objects like furniture and you want to just work on those specific items you can simply use this option and it's found under the modify tab under the view panel so how do you use it 
So back to our 3D view. And in this case, this is what we have here. Let's say I select any random beam. So let's say this is a beam of, of interest that we have here. So I can just simply zoom in, say I go with this specific one. All I have to do is let's say tab select so that I have a number selected here. And the next thing that we're gonna do under the modify contextual ribbon, we're gonna see that is a structural framing and we're gonna have this view panel. We're gonna have this small option, which is a selection box. So if I was just simply click on that option once, we're gonna have only this preview of this specific area. And if I was just simply select on it, we can clearly see that it's been shown in our 2D as well. And we can simply visualize how far that we are just in our grip and how narrow or even how high we are trying to view this specific area. And not only this, let's say in the event that we just simply uh, go away from our section box just by navigating to properties and unchecking on that, we're gonna revert back to the normal default view. And you can also have a section box for the entire 3D view just by simply checking on this without selecting any member and it's gonna draw this selection box around this specific building. And now we can be able to adjust our grips just by using these grip editors. And you can clearly see in this other view, in our 2D view, how far and the extent that we are applying within our specific project or within our specific model. So this is a really handy specific pro tip that we usually use as engineers, especially when coming up with different views and we wanna see the rebars and internal members when you're doing your design. So the next pro tip that I usually use a lot is adding frequently used folders within the open menu. So this is especially when you bring in, in specific families within your project and you wanna access them really quick, you can just simply add them in a way that it will be so easy for you to access them uh, immediately next time. So what do I mean? Within our specific model, if I navigate to the insert tab and I click on load family and is gonna bring up this specific window. So let's say in this case, it takes me all the way back, let's say all the way back to desktop and I don't want to be starting from this area and I just wanna bring my favorites here. It's quite simple. If I have my specific item saved, let's say under software, under Revit, let's say 25, under contents, then under library, and then under, let's say the English, all I have to do is just simply, if I am working, let's say with structural members for this case, let me just scroll down and I'm working in structural framing. All I have to do is just simply select, click, drag and drop it within this area here. And you can clearly see that it's here. So if I click on this, it's so easy for me to find it later on. And I can simply reorder just by dragging or just moving it within this specific area, just like that. So it's quite a handy tool. Let's say in the event that you have already brought in something that you want, let's say a rectangular beam, I click on open, is now brought in into Revit 2025. And in the event that I wanna load again, in future, I'll just simply find it here. I don't need to go through all these selection options that we had initially. So the fifth pro tip that I usually use a lot, especially when starting a new specific model is transferring project settings. So I don't need to set up my settings each and every single time. All I have to do is just to transfer my project standards from one specific project to another. And how to do this is very simple. In the event that you have two models open, let's say in the event that I have this sample architectural project from Autodesk open, and I have my personal project open. So all I have to do is just simply navigate to the Manage tab. And under the Manage tab, we're gonna find this option under the Settings panel called Transfer Project Standards. So if you are just to click on this option once, you're gonna simply have this option, which simply picks the open project. So pick from which specific project. So for our case, is this 2025 Soscared Structural Project. And then you can check what you wanna bring in. So you can check on none or check first on, on none and then specify the specific item that you wanna bring in. So let's in this case, I just wanna bring in something like the load types. And then all I have to do is just to click on okay. And just like that, 
we are simply bringing in these specific standards and you can clearly see down here. So if there are any duplicates, I can either overwrite or I can just create a new one only. So I can just click on new only and then it's gonna create a new one. And it's very simple, especially when you're working with multiple projects that you don't have time to uh, transfer the project standards, especially when you're working with standards in different projects so i can just simply opt to bring all these items especially let's say for hvc i can bring all of them within my project if i wanted to do that and it's very simple you can even bring in your specific view templates you don't need to create new view templates all you have to do is let's say check on none check only on the view template hit on okay and all the view templates we're gonna they're gonna be brought in within your specific model. And for you to apply, just simply navigate to view under view template. All you have to do is click on apply view template. And now you can be able to specify the specific view template that you wanna apply within your specific project. And it's that simple. So obviously there are other advanced specific tips, tricks and techniques that we usually use in Revit, like collaborate. So this is a really important tips that we usually use when multiple users are working on the same project and you want to share your specific work all you have to do is to collaborate create your specific worksheets and even activate the copy slash monitoring option not only that you can also apply then the dynamo options so under the manage tab you have the dynamo which can just simply use the player to come up with specific items that you want or you can just launch the dynamo itself to come up with specific user scripts that you can use within your specific project. So do you wanna master Revit like a pro? It's quite easy. All that you have to do is just simply navigate back to our specific browser. And for this case, instead of blogs, we're gonna just navigate to free content. We have free courses that cover each and every single thing that you need to know. If it's from Revit MEP, you're gonna learn. If it's from Revit Architectural, so if you just simply click on Revit here, you'll find all these options. So we have Revit MEP for beginners. We have Revit Architectural course for beginners that you need to start today. Not only that, if you're interested in learning about Dynamo, all you have to do is just simply click on all topics and just simply navigate to Dynamo. So under this option, we have a completely well-detailed Dynamo course that you need to start as of today. And it's a well-detailed course and it's for Dynamo, for Revit, that you need to understand. So frequently asked questions are like, how do I learn Revit shortcuts so fast? As a professional, I highly recommend you going through this specific article that we have here with more than a hundred commands and shortcuts that are usually pre-built within Revit. So you can clearly see the shortcuts of Rotate. You have your specific shortcuts even shown in pictorial view. And not only that, when it comes to other commands, we have these animations that you can clearly see how to use them and how to apply them within your project. And once you're done going through this specific shortcut, you're going to be a pro when it comes to designing. So that was the list of five of Paul's favorite time-saving tips and tricks. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the ebook, you can do that using link in the description and also in the pinned comment. Also, let me know which topic you want us to cover next, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.